Welcome back guys, this is Daniel from DIY Tech and Repairs. In this video we are going to build this awesome vase with RGB LEDs that can be controlled in many different ways. It's not my design per default, but I have all the links down in the description. But as you can see you can do uh, many wonderful things and it lights up the room like nothing you have seen. So stick tuned for this build and don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. So here we have all the gear that we are going to utilize today. And this is how it looked when I was printing them. I used my Ender 6 and my Seer 10S Pro. The Ender 6 was something that was brought for me from Banggood so thanks to them. Links are in the description for a 3D printer if you want one. My plan is to build in this video to build one of these really nice lamps. And what we have here is basically we have the base itself and as you can see here I have printed the base in three different colors silver, black and white and you could have picked a color that is even better if you want that this is the top side and I have printed this in a very very low quality with 0.6 millimeter nozzle and that's generally more than enough what you have here is basically the inside and this is where all the LEDs will sit so you press this in here, let's see if I can get it in. It sits like that. And on the side here you have all the LEDs, you have six LED strips. And I'm using this WS2811 LEDs I think, that are individually controlled. Then on the inside you have this, and that's basically to actually make sure that the light or the glows from the LEDs are dispersed or evenly dispersed inside. And on the outside we have this vase shape, really nice uh, see-through plastic that I have chosen. And that sits basically like this. And as you can see here, I have chosen to print two different types. Underneath here you have the lid, and that basically sits like that and you just press it in. And on the lid is where you actually put the controller itself. And the controller itself that this is bid for, built for is the Node MCU controller that as you can see will fit just nicely on the, the screw holes here. And the USB outlet is easily accessible from the hole here. But you also have an extra hole here that you can utilize for powering this instead. In my case I generally use the VMOS Mini so I will do that in this case as well and just plug it in like that and glue it in place. Then I will use this Hi-Link 5 volt uh, DC to DC or AC to DC converters. This is 0.6 Ampere and that's more than enough to power these LEDs here as long as you don't put them on full power. You can of course also use them and power it directly from the USB on these here. So I will do both of these types. Before building, the first step to do is actually to test fit every part to make sure that everything fits nicely. If it fits too snug, it may be that you break things loose. And especially the vase form parts that you have here, they are very very thin unless you printed them very thick. And they will break very easily. And the first thing to mount is this middle piece here that holds all, all the lights. And I'm going to use and go with the data. If you look at the here you can see there are arrows that goes that direction. So my start point will be here and then I go up like that and then over and down again. And that makes it very simple to do the wiring itself. The power will all be powered from the bottom side here so it's just a data line that goes around back and forth. And if they are new, this glue should be enough. If not, you can add some hot glue to the ends or super glue instead. But this should be enough. And I'm going to add them to the top here, so as close as possible to the top. So the next part is now to attach all the data lines and I have decided that one of those will be the input and you need to be careful when soldering here because this will melt the plastic. Thank you. 
and I'm using this very nice silicone wire and all the links are down in the description and we need them to be roughly that length I think And now it's time to wire up all the power and to that I'm going to use a little bit thicker wire and that's basically the same thing, up and down and up and down. And now it's time to get this through here. And yeah, it's not that pretty in the bottom here, but that will not be seen later on. And the wire on top will not be seen either because we are going to put this on top here. And therefore everything is invisible now. On the inside now, just be very careful here. We're going to attach this board to the device here. And we're going to use 5 volt output and a D4. So let's see if we can find D4 is there. And I'm just going to solder directly to the pins. Because I'm not going to use it or anything else afterwards. And ground is that pin. And 5 volt is V in, and that's that one. And now it's just a matter of finding a couple of screws that will fit into those holes. And since I never have screws small enough for other projects where people have had these small ones, I'm going to add hot glue instead. And hot glue is a good replacement for things like this, if you ask me. This is the full setup now. We have the board here with some hot glue and everything, and it's time to program this. We will insert the USB cable to this, and we plug it into the computer. So what we are going to use is a software called VLED, and on the VLED page on GitHub, you have all the instructions on how to do this and among the things that it can do. If you go down a little bit, you had a quick start guide and documentation on how to program the types. So in my case, I'm going to download latest release and you have that on the right side here where you can press the latest. When downloading this, make sure to choose the correct version. That version there is 4 megabyte version. And I'm using a 1 megabyte ESP8266, so I chose this one here. And here we have my favorite tools to flash this, and I have the Tasmotizer that I use for flashing my Tasmota devices. But this can of course also be used to actually flash any type of binary into your ESP. Or you can use the ESP Home Flasher. In this case I'm using the ESP Home Flasher, and let's refresh and make sure that we see the COM port that we just inserted. And we go to browse and choose the binary. In this case, it is a one megabyte binary that we're going to use, and we press flash ESP. So if everything goes okay, it will now start to blink on the ESP, and it is flashing. And there you go, it is now flashed. The software or the ESP itself will actually now reboot and let's go into it and configure it. And to do that you can do that in many ways and I'm going to use and connect to the AP on my computer that is called VLED AP. So let's do that and connect to it. 
Depending on a computer, you will be directed to the VLED start page. If you aren't, you can go to 4.3.2.1, as you can see in the top here. And if all is corrected, you will be directed to the VLED starting page. Set up your network and a password. If you don't use static IP, leave it as is. And for this device, I'm going to use DHCP. I'm going to change this one to uh, light one. And I'm not going to care about the access point itself. Or oh, I can actually do it like light one here as well. Uh, this is fail safe if something happens. Uh, APIP, disable Wi Fi, save and connect. And that's it for the first setup. Now you should reconnect to your normal wireless network. So if everything is right here, we should see it show up here. And as you can see, we have it here. So let's go to that IP. And it's now time to configure this all up. And I'm going to use PC mode since I want to see everything. So let's go to config, LED preferences. How many LEDs do we have in total? And I have 14 times 6, and that is 84. Maximum current, I'm using 1000 milliampere power supply. And that color order should be fine, I think. And we save it. User interface, VLED light 1. Save. And we go back and let's test it out. And by looking at this, we can now see after entering all the details that all the LEDs are lighting up. Let's change this to blue. And you can see it's blue. Change it to red. And it goes all red and green. And green works fine too. And white will also work. So that's really, really good. When configuring your VLED, it's important to configure the segments correctly here. As you can see at mine here, I will be starting at the LED 0 and go to 14. And I will be using grouping 1 and no spacing. And on the second one, the segment 1, don't forget that the segment 0 was already filled in, so you need to change the first one. You go from 14 to 28, 14 LEDs, and you need to reverse the the direction if you have done as me where you go with the data led or the data wire up and down and up and down and the same goes to the next one normal no reverse direction segment 3 you have reverse direction segment 4 no reverse direction and segment 5 you use reverse direction if you do this correctly you will for get the led to go all the way from bottom and up bottom and up and bottom and up Instead of going bottom up and up and down, up and down and up and yeah, you understand, like a snake instead. When you have a vase like this one, you actually want all the LEDs to go in one direction. It's either bottom up or top bottom. So this is actually the final result. And I hope you enjoyed this video. As you can see here, I have a different types of random colors going back and forth. And you can do very many different types of styles that you would like to have. This is just a random one. You can also see here where you have like a fire imitation and you can go very hard or low on it. And on the distance, this looks so beautiful. Trust me, it's great. The camera can't pick it up. So I would like to thank you all for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe and give me a like if you like it and you have all the links in the bottom. If you want to see how I can build this with a built-in AC to DC uh, PSU instead, stay hooked on because I have a couple of more minutes in this video showing that off. So, otherwise, thanks. You can either use this type of converter here, but this one is just 0.6 volt. Or you can go for an adapter like this one that plugs directly into the outlet. And this is also 5 volt, but 2.5 ampere. Both works equally good. But first, I also want something to be able to turn this on and off, because this one should be able to be turned on and off. And I'm going to use this one here, because I don't need that high light. And as you saw in the earlier in the video, you can determine and set the max current that the lights are bound to be draw from this. So that's good as well. 
So well, let's solder everything in here first. And we have the ESP here. We have the ground and we have the VCC pin. So we are going to run AC here. So those need to be protected a little bit better. Pre-thinning. Then we're adding heat shrink on top of that. This is on the output. So I'm actually going to add it like this. And when doing an AC install like this, you need to have some kind of fuse as well. Don't forget about that. And I only have this type of holders right now. They are for glass fuses. And so I'm going to add this one up. But that's basically how it is done. And what I do with this part here is basically to some hot glue. I dab that in place like that. And this one will be programmed. We have this wire here that goes in here. And for this not to escape, I just tied a knot around it. And in a perfect world you need to tie this in, but I don't have the fuse yet. So if you do this, don't forget the fuse. I will skip this just for this testing purpose here. So this is another variant where you have a button on the side and you have a cable and you have that one there. So this is another variant and it's now done. And it gives the same result when you are ready for using it. You can either choose by using a USB power device or a 220 volt power device like I did here. Don't forget the fuse that you should have in line with the power input. So once again guys, thanks for watching. And hopefully I see you next time. If you have any suggestions, please leave a link below. If you want to find the 3D printed parts for this thing, please check the links below as well. They aren't my design, so I give all the credits to the author itself.